वेलकम टू सुपीडियो प्रॉफिट वीकली मार्केट राउंड आप नाइनटीन मे टू थाउजेंड एट्टीन आई एम सागर नंदी चीफ एनालिस्ट एंड ट्रेडर एट सुपीडियो प्रॉफिट ए कंपनी बेस्ड इन सिंगापुर आई उल नट टेक टाइम टू इंट्रोड्यूस माइ सेल्फ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो मोर अबाउट मी द कम्पनी सुपीडियो प्रॉफिट और मोर इम्पर्टेंटली हाउ इट मे हेल्प इन योर ट्रेडिंग यू कैन विजिट द वेबसाइट superior profit dot co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profit trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold using technical analysis. They tend to impact related stocks. It is better to trade in the market's direction. We try to decipher market's direction using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical analysis of four broad market ETFs. Other than aligning trades with broad market, we try to align it with industry strength and weakness. We will carry out that study using industry scorecard and heat map along the way we may go through some of the trade ideas shared in traders forum or in the social network pages and look for potential trades for the coming week that was the last slide of the presentation we now move to live system we start our commodity study using oil we are looking at the oil etf uso using weekly backdrop chart and daily pop on chart together we call this at a glance template because it helps us identify a low risk swing trade opportunity at the right edge usually in few seconds from the weekly chart we can see that oil is going up strongly 1 2 3 4 5 6 it has six successive weeks with bullish color cyan in the daily chart last friday we noticed there was a bearish headwind signal however there was no bearish headwind trade setup because the weekly candle color and shape both were bullish that didn't meet the checklist conditions for taking a bearish headwind trade what we would do we would protect profit in any oil long position using trailing stop but we would not look for any short trade in this week price generally moved sideways the candle colors remained yellow in the daily chart for the entire week there is neither any long nor any short swing trade setup in oil right now now we are looking at gold using at a glance template gold is moving opposite to oil it is having bearish color in the weekly chart for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 successive weeks. Last week, in the market roundup, I mentioned that though on closing basis, gold was higher, it had indecisive shape candle and the up move was on very small volume. Also, I had mentioned that price recovered from the oversold condition from the lower boundary and also from the wide direction support level to the value area 
it came to the declining yellow direction line and on last Friday it tilted down. The candle color was still green. There was no trade setup at that time. This week on Monday the traffic light candle color turned bearish that is red and Tuesday had a very big gap down day. Because the down move was from a very big gap down day we had no optimal risk short entry opportunity. Price is already below lower boundary that is too oversold to try to take any short trade. It is also near memory support line. On this Friday it has displayed a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart. However, weekly candle is very bearish in both shape and color therefore there is no bullish shadowing trade setup. Looking at the bullish shadowing signal and the memory support line it seems that immediate next move of gold will be upward. A day trader may look for trade opportunities in the long direction. There is no immediate swing trade opportunity in gold. Now we move to market breadth study. This shows us what is happening under the hood. We carry out the market breadth study using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts and three pairs of internal studies new high low advanced decline and up down volume for both NASDAQ and NYS. In terms of price move both the indices continue to be in uptrend in this longer term weekly chart. They will remain in uptrend until these memory support lines are broken. This week for both the indices price dropped but it dropped by little amount. None of them could go below the midway of the previous candle. It is as if price is suspending, waiting to decide what to do next. Internals are also very mixed. Four of the internals went down and two went up. Three closed above zero, this green and cyan color ones, and three closed below zero, the magenta and red color ones. This shows a mixed picture. Let us see if this same mixed neutral picture is shown from the broad market ETFs. We are now looking at the broad market ETFs using Q at a glance template. We are starting with S&P 500 ETF SPY. Last week we had a very bullish shape and color candle. Price had gone up after being supported from the memory support line in weekly. However, last week closed right at the memory resistance line. Looking at that, I had mentioned that we would not like to take any long trade in SPY at that time. That was useful analysis. This week, price tried to go up but came down close below that memory resistance line. In the weekly, it is inside a triangle pattern. In the daily chart, Last week it broke above the watermark resistance level. This Monday had an indecisive shape candle and from Tuesday onward it moved almost sideways. The weekly candle color has remained cyan that is bullish. In the daily chart if now price comes down little bit and goes up again 
and gives us a cyan colored candle then it may give us a go with flow trend following long trade opportunity right now there is no swing trade opportunity in SQ one thing to notice is the very low volume in SPY in recent two weeks and if there was any high activity day that was a down day that was Tuesday of this week all the other days of this week and several days of previous week had minuscule activity this pattern is similar in the other ETFs as well let's look at QQQ QQQ using at a glance template it was the strongest ETF one week ago last week it had closed very close to the upper boundary line looking at that we would not like to take any long trade though overall QQQ was bullish there was no low risk entry opportunity at that time similar to SPY this week initially it tried to go up ended Monday with a bearish shape candle Tuesday was a gap down day afterwards mostly moved sideways on Friday the candle traffic light color has turned to red that is bearish however there is no Q swing trade setup at this moment Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA using at a glance template the weekly candle patterns are very similar to SPY this week it tried to go up but then fell down in daily chart on Monday it broke above the watermark resistance level Tuesday was a gap down day since then it moved sideways very similar to SPY and QQQ let's look at IWM IWM using at a glance template this ETA had a very different price move this week this is the only one that could break to all-time high it went above the watermark resistance in weekly chart and also the memory resistance in weekly chart last week's price closed just below the memory resistance and this week it could break above that the other three ETFs initially tried to go up and then close down however IWM initially tried to go down somewhat we can see that from the long lower tail in the weekly chart but then closed higher in daily chart we see on Monday it had a bearish shape candle tried to open higher but closed down Tuesday was a gap down day that closed higher and when it's onwards it continued to rally there was a cyan color candle on Wednesday however the closing was at the upper boundary line that was too high for us to try any swing long trade Friday closed above the upper boundary line so we are not going to take any long trade right now interestingly a bearish headwind signal has come on the daily chart right at the very top there is no bearish headwind trade setup because the weekly candle shape and color both are bullish however looking at the daily bearish headwind signal if one is holding long position in IWM on maybe COSAS and put trailing stock to protect profit if we combine the insight from market breadth analysis and broad market ETFs analysis we see that except for IWM which represents the small cap stocks both market breadth and ETFs show a neutral picture of the market there is no trade setup in any of the four ETFs and the market internals are very mixed as well what to do under such market conditions there are multiple possibilities one may be to take both long trades and short trades 
longs in strong stocks fundamentally strong stocks in strong industries and short trades in fundamentally weak stocks in weak industries by doing that when the market eventually decides its direction we'll have an opportunity to exit the trades that are against market with small loss and hopefully hold the profitable ones for larger profit and the second alternative needs much less effort that is just not to take any new trade right now until the market's direction is clearer that is from the market level when we drill down to sector and industry levels we can always find trading opportunities that are high probability low risk using q360 degree analysis let's go to the sector and industry analysis now sector performance analysis every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods red bar represents performance of this week green bar represents performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar together they give us performance of four weeks or about one month of performance any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down this week four of the 11 sectors went up and seven declined among them three sectors moved by tiny percentages overall this paints a slightly bearish picture which are the sectors that move by tiny percentages they are healthcare consumer staples and consumer discretionary that is interesting if we look at consumer discretionary as a sector it didn't move much However, later on, when we study the industries, we'll see there are many consumer discretionary industries in best performing group, also accelerating group. What does it show? It shows that a certain category of consumer discretionary industries are going up and another category of consumer discretionary industries are going down. They are neutralizing each other and the sector therefore didn't change much. That is why we always need to drill down to the industry level to find trading opportunities. Sector level and certainly the market level is too broad to identify optimal trading opportunities. The three sectors that gain by reasonable percentages are materials, energy and industrials. Remember, we could identify industrial's possible up move. I think two weeks ago, looking at multiple industrial's industries accelerating at that time. What about real estate? It is the very worst performer this week. One week ago, I had warned on real estate sector based on deceleration. Real estate ended up being the worst performer. It reversed after displaying deceleration. Once again, acceleration and deceleration in this case, deceleration turned out to be the best predictor of future industry move. Based on last week's analysis, you could book profit in real estate long positions and look for potential shots. This is a snapshot of the sector performance of one week ago. In that market roundup, I observed that though real estate as a sector went up at industry level, I saw many, many real estate industries decelerating last week. Based on that, I had warned that the real estate stocks may start to fall down. That was one week ago. That indeed happened this week as real estate turned out to be the worst performance. We will look at real estate stocks in more detail when we study the industries. These two sectors, financials and technology, this one. 
not telecom financials and technology the arrow is pointing to telecom it should point to information technology information technology and financials are two of the best performers if we look over past one year period however in the current week they are the worst decelerators for swing trading it usually pays better to take notice of immediate moves than longer term price performance going by that principle one may not add to new long positions in these sectors right now instead one would do better to protect profit using trailing stop and probably start looking for shorts at the very top let's now try to identify potential trades from industry level analysis these are 10 of the best performing industries this week best performing industries went up by 4 to 5.7 percentages significant gains for one week five of them were in consumer discretionary many consumer discretionary industry related to apparel footwear etc went up however consumer discretionary industries related to housing went down this is what i mentioned when looking at the sector level at sector level consumer discretionary didn't move much that is because though apparel footwear etc went up significantly housing related industries went down they balanced each other looking at the industry level we can pinpoint where to look for longs where to look for shorts harley davidson is in motorcycle manufacturers group is not great regarding fundamentals however in the weekly chart it created a bullish cyan colored candle for the first time since january 2018 if daily builds a higher low then it may give a trend following go with flow swing long opportunity you may keep an eye on that you may take that trade if the industry continues to improve the industry was weak earlier if the industry continues to improve and the technicals are aligned then it may be okay to take a long trade the fundamentals are in the middle it is not overvalued yet we we'll look at that soon using q stock score agricultural and farm machinery this industry was also weak earlier now it is one of the best performers dairy and co de went up by 5.9 percent on friday after earnings it broke out of successive resistance memory trend lines in recent days and the last one was broken on friday there is no more memory resistance in daily or weekly chart it has excellent earnings growth the best among its peer stocks you may keep an eye on de for low risk long entry opportunity i have mentioned this phenomena before when a stock is in downtrend it creates multiple resistance memory lines at the very bottom as it slows down doesn't drop anymore and starts to gradually go up those memory resistance lines get broken one after another by observing that one may be ready to take the long entry at the right moment as of today there is no more memory resistance line in de therefore it is right for taking a trend following long trade let us look at QA to look at the sector performance then come to the best performing industries look at motorcycle manufacturers agricultural farm machinery and also these stocks hog harley davidson nde dairy and co it will show us how easily using QA we can identify changing trends at sector industry level and then drill down to stocks fundamentals and finally technicals to take a trade where industry technicals fundamentals are all aligned to the trade giving us 
very high probability Q cubes. This is Q edge. Every time we open Q edge, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. It does similar analysis for sectors as well as industries. Let's look at the sector panel. For every review period, we can double click on the header to sort in ascending or descending order. It's a toggle button. For every review period, it assigns a low score to the worst performer, high score to the best performer, also assigns a heat map, magenta to the worst performer, cyan to the best performer, and a color gradient to all the ones in between. Result is a scorecard and heat map that instantly tells us which sectors are strong now, cyan ones, healthcare and telecom and which sectors are weak, real estate and utilities. Remember we could catch the turning down of real estate precisely from previous week's market roundup. And interestingly I see telecom is strong now and it was weak for very long period. This may be a good time to start looking for long term as well as swing trade by opportunities. The same is true for healthcare as well. On the other hand, Infotech that was strong for long time, we can significantly, same is true to a lesser extent for financials. We can see that Infotech and financials, they were the best performers over one year period having two of the best scores over now they have the worst deceleration in this week that's why i mentioned it is better not to try to enter new long positions in these sectors looking at past performance so far behind one year ago is not the right way to try to take swing trades it's much wiser to enter swing trades based on recent moves that is showing as bearish moves in infotech and financials right now. Where is it bullish now? Healthcare, telecom. Why I pick these two specifically is because they were weak earlier. So if they start to move up, people who had shorted the stocks in these sectors and industries will be forced to cover. And that may fuel the rally further. On the other hand, sectors like energy, which was strong for a long time, the stocks are not at a low price level anymore. They may not be optimally valued. They may even be overvalued. Those are not the best times to enter swing trades and certainly not the time to enter long term investments. To identify trade opportunities, we need to look at the industry level. QH does the same analysis for industries as it does for sectors. In industry panel, we can get the best performing industries by double clicking on the 5 day score column. We can see motorcycle manufacturers as well as agricultural farm and machinery they were weak earlier we instantly know that from the magenta color score in earlier review periods and now they are cyan they are two of the strongest in the current week that is why i tried to look for long entry opportunities in these two industries let's drill down to the stocks in these two industries we could Click the drill down button to analyze the stocks in real time. To save time, we'll use offline Q scorecard. This is Q scorecard. This gives us the fundamental vital statistics and much more insight on more than 2000 liquid stocks in the US market. For swing trading, it is 
better in my view to stick to liquid stocks and not trade illiquid stocks illiquid stocks doesn't tend to follow any pattern therefore swing trading them is very difficult the Q trade setups will work pretty well on the liquid stocks that's why we focus on the liquid stocks only in this Q score let's look at the motorcycle manufacturers we can drill down to an industry by typing the industry here we know there is only one stock in this industry in the USA market that is Harley Davidson HOG instantly from the color coding we know that it is medium valued not overvalued yet if it was already overvalued then the primary valuation would show up in magenta color then personally I prefer not to take any long trade be it for swing trading and certainly for long term investing but it is not overvalued yet in terms of valuation growth is not very attractive last quarter it had significant EPS growth acceleration from a negative EPS growth of 37% it went to positive growth of 74% however in the latest quarter it declined again it pays a decent dividend of 3.48 percentage that's why I mentioned fundamentally it is not great however it is possible to take a swing trade it's not overvalued yet let's look at the technical charts this is Harley Davidson using at a glance template in the weekly chart it dropped sharply and then for many weeks the weekly candle color turned neutral it was not magenta bearish anymore two successive weeks had long lower tails that is the shapes were bullish price tried to go down but went up closed higher that showed up as long lower tails looking at that one might start to be ready to look for potential long trades this week after long time it ended with a bullish color cyan color candle in the weekly chart in daily we can see there was earnings at which point it gapped up however gave back all the gains then gradually recovered price again this Wednesday it went back above the watermark support line thereby creating a false downside breakout on Friday's price is just below the yellow direction line and it is somewhat away from the recent low therefore we are not going to take any swing long trade right now if Harley Davidson pulls back little bit and goes up again then it may give us a low risk trend following long trade opportunity it will be very nice if it comes precisely to the memory support and goes up from there then we will have further support from the memory line however that is not required if it pulls down little bit and goes up giving a sign color candle it may give us a trade for a long trade opportunity you may keep an eye for that let's now look at the agricultural equipment stocks agricultural and farm machinery stocks we have four stocks in this industry we can double click on any column to sort based on that I mentioned this stock dairy and company the ticker symbol DE it has the second best score in terms of valuation and in terms of earnings growth it has the best possible earnings growth not looking at only the latest quarter but looking at all the 
three recent quarters and then all the three recent years across all these periods we can see we have yearly earnings growth gaining momentum from minus 8 percent to positive 7.6 percent to 38 percent quarterly earnings growth is also high shown by bright green color it also has the best revenue growth pays the dividend of 1.6 percent the best dividend payer in this list of four stocks the industry was weak for a long time and now starting to turn up this stock is showing earnings growth and revenue growth these are good times to start looking for buying opportunities let's look at the technical charts this is de using at a glance template in the weekly chart it tried to go below this watermark level we had two successive weeks with lower tail candles it is good to always keep an eye on lower tail candles be it in weekly charts or in daily charts especially at previous support levels the support levels can be watermark support levels or memory support levels if candles show up with lower tails at those support levels it is likely to go up from there you may use them for day trades or you may use them for swing trading in the daily chart we see that price broke out of the memory resistance level on Friday. Let me change to the clean chart template. It will show how successive memory resistance lines were broken in last few weeks. This is DE using clean chart template, daily interval. When the stock was in downtrend, it had many declining memory resistance lines five of them here i can see and as the stock started to turn around all of them were broken one after another the last one was broken on friday friday had a very bullish shape and bullish color candle it went up with extreme high activity quickly is clearly bullish industry is strong fundamentals are strong in terms of growth and technicals are also very strong it is overbought right now shown by this stretch dot coming on top of the candle there is no low risk entry opportunity right now how could we wait for a long trade two ways one is if the stock moves sideways and then breaks above this high point we may try a low risk entry breakout entry or we may wait for it to pull back somewhat and go up again giving us a cyan color candle and a trend following go through long trade opportunity we may keep an eye for that from the best performing industries we now move to the worst performing industries real estate sector decelerated heavily last week and this week we have five of the worst performers in that sector hitting the signals from QA industry deceleration proved valuable in fact if we use QA we see all the 11 real estate industries are showing weakness we can see that instantly from the scorecard and heat map this shows it is not a time to take new long positions in this sector. If you are holding profitable long positions and the stocks are strong, that is not overvalued yet, technically are going up, then we don't need to exit those trades. We may protect them using trailing stock, but it may not be a good idea to enter new long positions in this sector right now. Before discussing more on real estate industries let's look at this communications equipment industry cisco very well known stock in this group is optimally valued however it has 
slowing yearly earnings growth. It beautifully reversed from the very top after giving a possible box short setup on Monday, 14th May this week. Cisco pulled back precisely from the level of weekly bearish headwind of March 2018 and it showed the weekly bearish headwind signal again this week. Headwind signals often precede price reversals and Q traders take precautionary measures when such signals appear. Watching the possible box short trade setup and also the bearish headwind signal in weekly chart one could take a short trade right at the very top. Let's go to QH. Look at this industry. See how it is weakening. Drill down to the stocks in scorecard and then look at its technical chips. In QH, to look at the worst performing industries, we can double click the 5 days column again. All the worst performers in magenta color will come to the top. Communications equipment is an industry that was strong earlier. I am always looking for these transitions from strength to weakness or weakness to strength so that I can catch the stock at the optimal price point. This industry communications equipment immediately caught my attention because it was shown earlier and now is very weak magenta. Let's look at the stocks in this industry. Cisco is a stock in this industry. From the valuation columns, you can instantly see that it is optimally valued. So valuation wise it is strong. However, if we look at growth, yearly earnings growth, it is slowing down. Also, if you compare the earnings growth with other stocks in the group. Let's sort it over EPS growth one year. We can see there are many other stocks in this group with very large earnings growth. Where is Cisco in the list? It has fallen down much below. Right? In terms of one year earning growth, it is ranking 22 in this list. It is not at all having good earnings growth. Let's look at the technical charts. This is Cisco using at a glance template. Several months ago, it had displayed a bearish headwind signal from which price declined. It came to the value area in the weekly chart that peak of the bearish headwind created watermark resistance levels. Last week it tried to go above the watermark resistance levels close just below them and this week it declined sharply from the same level. This week again displayed a bearish headwind signal in the literature. In the daily chart we had the watermark resistance levels at these price points. We had a bear release signal on this candle. We had high activity at that price level earlier which pointed to possible exertion of bulls and aggressive bears coming in. The theory is that when price goes back to the same level and displays a pair release signal, some of the selling may still be left and one may take a short trade with very low risk. This particular candle had small upper tail as well as small lower tail so one might wait for one more day and the next day had a very bearish shaped candle closing decisively below the watermark resistance levels. One could take a short trade right at that point, put stop just above recent high and as the stock dropped heavily, one could book large profit. This trade could be taken based on the 
barely signal at long term watermark resistance levels in the daily chart the bearish shape candle that followed also the existence of bearish headwind in the weekly chart at the same price level we can see it dropped heavily after earnings as earnings was nearby one might not take a short trade using stocks using short call vertical would be the appropriate instrument and that trade would be very profitable that trade would benefit from delta move the stocks move as well as from the volatility crash after earnings cisco has very liquid options therefore it would be perfectly all right to use call verticals short call verticals to take this bearish trade once again Paying attention to the bearish headwind signals gave us more confidence to take a short trade in Cisco. Let's now get back to the real estate industries again. Office rates is the worst performing real estate industry of this week. This is a typing mistake. It should not be retail rates. It is office rates. In the Q scorecard, there are 24 stocks in office rates. Out of them, 23 declined. 22 of them fell by more than 2%. 9 dropped by more than 5%. These are significant drops and it shows widespread decline of the office rates industry. You could protect capital by industry deceleration of last week. These two stocks NRE and BXP were overvalued and reversed from technical resistance levels. You could easily safeguard profit in long positions and probably take profitable short trades combining the industry's deceleration, fundamental weakness, they were overvalued and also technical resistance levels. Interestingly, Though the real estate sector, many industries inside it are weak, remember these two stocks we had identified earlier, PK and INN in hotel and resort rates. How we identified them? We identified them based on fundamentals, technicals and industry strength, just as the real estate industries were starting to go up. And now we see real estate is starting to fall down, but these two stocks are holding on very well. That is the value of using fundamental strength also when identifying swing trade opportunities and certainly for long term investment opportunities. These stocks were fundamentally strong when we bought them. They were optimally valued and even now they are optimally valued. Why they are holding on to the price is probably because they are fundamentally strong. If they were fundamentally weak, the moment the market and specifically the industry starts to go down, the stock would go down. Some people ignore fundamental analysis. However, I have seen that doing a quick check on fundamental scorecard gives us more confidence first of all in taking the trade and the result turns out to be much better let's look at QH look at the worst performing industries then go to office rates drill down to NRE and BXP and also look at PK and INN using technical charts in QH, if we want to look at industries of a particular sector, we can come to the sector panel. Real estate is the worst performer this way. We can click on the drill down button. Then the industry panel will show only real estate industries. And we see all of them are in magenta color now. You can say to these two, we are holding on to cyan color for a long time but now turning magenta and hotel and resort rates. This 
was the only industry that didn't have deceleration one week ago. However, this week it has decelerated heavily and it is turning bearish over five days period. Instantly, the visual heat map shows us that real estate is not the sector to take new long positions right now. Office rates is the worst performer among the real estate industries that is why it has come with the lowest score let's look at office rates stocks using q scorecard we can filter on that industry we can see these two stocks NRE and BXP both are overvalued the industry was weakening and we had these two overvalued stocks those were the times we would like to start looking for short opportunities and protect profit in any existing long position let's look at these two stocks NRE and BXP using technical charts day to full drop isn't it in early earlier dropped sharply and went back up equally sharply came precisely to the same watermark level one week ago we tried to go above that but closed exactly at that level this week right from the open it started to drop in the daily chart it came to the same watermark level gave a bearish shape candle at this point there was earnings only few days after that so if we were going to take a short trade at this candle or maybe on this candle using the bear daily signal then that trade would be taken using short call vertical after earnings it tried to go up but immediately reversed so one could take a very short trade on this magenta candle also and that shot could be taken using stocks. A trade taken before earnings using short call vertical using the bear daily signal box short trade setup in daily chart or based on this magenta color candle. Both trades have given good profit until Friday. On Friday it hit the lower boundary level and at least partial profit would be booked at that point. As the industry is weak and technicals are also weak, we would not have any reason to exit full position. Partial position could be held trying to let profit run and using trailing stop in a way so that the entire trade is risk free from now onward. BXP, this is another stock in the same industry. This stock came precisely to the memory resistance level. Last week it tried to go above that but closed below. And this week it started to fall from that memory resistance level. It was there both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. Using that information at minimum one would protect profit using trailing stop and one might also attempt to take a short trade using stocks. The earnings was already over around this point so one could take a short trade around this point as well. That trade could be taken using the industry's weakness and the technical resistance in the charts and the stocks fundamental weakness in terms of valuation. It was overvalued. It is still overvalued. While these stocks were overvalued and dropped easily as the industry turned around the stocks that were fundamentally sound pk and inn they didn't drop so much let's look at them pk a very strong move in the weekly chart and the up move is continuing this way it's not stopping yet what about inn 
Ainen had a bullish move earlier and for several weeks it is moving sideways. However, the weekly candle colors are still bullish, cyan, and this week it has a bullish shape candle as well. Looking at the daily chart, we see price is being supported by the yellow direction line. We have a cyan color candle on Friday. In recent period, price move had been somewhat sideways. However, looking at the weekly and the daily, it looks more likely that the stock will go up. We could catch the stock earlier, maybe at this point, using go withdraw long trade setup. And we could book partial profit at upper boundary. The remaining position can be held now, trying to let profit run and using trailing stop to protect existing revenue position. How are the fundamentals of PK and INN now? Let's quickly look at that. As we know the symbols, we'll simply search for the ticker symbols. PK, it is still fundamentally optimally valued. Therefore, it is still strong stock unlike the two stocks we studied earlier that were overvalued and INN is the same INN also has optimal valuation we can note that instantly from the sand color that is why I mentioned that if we choose a swing trade using fundamentals as well as technicals will do much better the chance of getting stopped out is less and chance of hitting profit target and letting profit run is higher let's look at the accelerating industries consumer discretionary acceleration is evident this week eight of the ten most accelerating industries are in consumer discretion again you remember at sector level Consumer discretionary didn't move much, however at industry level, we saw several of them are among the best performers and at accelerating industries level, 8 of the 10 most accelerating are in consumer discretionary. It is always essential to drill down to the industry level to identify trends and then look at stocks inside. Q heat map shows that seven of them are accelerating after prolonged weakness. The only one that was already strong for some time is department stores. All the other seven accelerating consumer discretion industries were weak earlier. Therefore, you may look for long term as well as swing long trade opportunities in them. Cable and satellite is one consumer discretionary industry that was weak earlier. Comcast in this industry gave a profitable headwind reversal swing trade setup on 10th May. The stock was and is still optimally valued. If the stock continues to go up, then after headwind long trade, a go with flow long trade setup will follow. You may keep an eye on that in the coming days. Let's look at the accelerating industries in QH and then go to cable and satellite and look for the stock Comcast. In QH to look for the accelerating industries, we can click on the page 5 days column. The most accelerating industries appear on the top with the cyan color page score. We see many of them are in consumer discretionary. This two, three. this eight. Most accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary, and only department store had been strong for quite long time. All the other seven were in magenta color for many review periods. And just now turning cyan. In fact, they not only accelerated as shown by the pace five days column, 
but they are already strong many of them as shown by the score 5 days I looked at cable and satellite it was deep magenta earlier and now nicely turned cyan let's look at the stocks in this industry using scorecard instantly from the scorecard we can see Comcast CMCSA is optimally valued has earnings growth not great growth but earnings growth in all the recent quarters as well as years that is fine we don't expect great growth and optimal valuation at the same time sometimes it may happen but not that frequent pays a dividend of 2.3 percent as the industry was weak for a long time we would expect to buy it as a value stock not as a growth stock let's look at its technical charts this is comcast using at a glance template in the weekly chart it had a sharp drop for two successive weeks it had long lower tail candles remember i mentioned that whenever there are long lower tail candles we keep an eye anticipating a move in the bullish direction on this day in the daily chart we had a bullish headwind signal at that time weekly candles were yellow and also bullish shape that met all the requirements of a bullish headwind reversal trade setup and that worked out beautifully as of this week it came to the value area more than risk distance or about the same as risk distance was covered we could book partial profit as the technicals are strong both in weekly as well as daily and the industry is accelerating there would not be any need to exit full position partial position could be held trying to let profit run this could end up being a profitable long-term investment trade as well the bullish headwind reversal trade setup has already come now it is little bit late to enter long position the stop loss will be a bit far we may wait for it to pull back little bit and go up again giving us a go with flow long trade set decelerating industries four of the decelerating industries are in information technology and two are related to semiconductors it may be safer to avoid entering new long positions in semiconductors or in technology sector in general especially if the stocks are already over i didn't drill down however you can drill down to some of these decelerating industries and look for potential short opportunities and certainly protect profit in any existing long positions in qa you can get the decelerating industries by double clicking on the page five days column the worst decelerating industries come to the top with magenta score we can see two of the semiconductors industries were strong earlier now turning weak the pattern is patchy weak here strong here weak here strong here and now weak again over five days period many of the stocks maybe at very high level you may keep an eye on them protect profit and if there is a short trade setup on technical charts you can take that as well that will combine the industry's weakness with the technical weakness if the stocks are overvalued that will be even better we will be able to combine all the three aspects before taking the short trades in recent days i had shared multiple trade ideas or techniques in the social network pages and also in the forums let's go through some of them this is a sector rotation table that i shared in google plus on friday midday this was using the real-time q edge tool and we could see 
using real-time system that financials and infotech were decelerating heavily for the week whereas telecom consumer staples were accelerating heavily and from the score across these many months we can see the ones that are accelerating were weak earlier the ones that are decelerating were strong earlier this clearly shows a sector rotation taking place will it continue next week we have to see that however whatever happens we can identify that instantly from this sector heat map and in more detail by drilling down into the industry heat map let's go through few more posts this was a post on baidu you may remember i discussed baidu in weekly market roundup earlier it was at multiple resistance levels i had also shared it in the social network at the time using longer term resistance to take a shorter term trade this was baidu when i shared this post earlier by two was at the memory and watermark resistance in weekly as well as in the daily here daily chart is on the left hand side looking at those multiple resistance levels any long position holder was to be cautious and short traders could start looking for opportunities i had analyzed the fundamentals in the market roundup earlier and saw that fundamentally it was very strong in terms of valuation as well as technicals that's why i mentioned it would not be safe to try to short it using stocks however options could be used the stock is expensive 267 dollar at this price point therefore to reduce cost one could use short call verticals i did that and I captured the result in a later post in the social network. This is a follow up post on the Baidu potential short trade setup using short call verticals. This is the result of the short call vertical. This call vertical had expiry of 15th June. To 70 to 80 short call vertical let me explain how i decided on this particular setup the option setup it was initiated on 11th may when the stock was near the resistance levels both in weekly as well as daily the short strike was right at the resistance level that was 270 so i shorted the call at 270 and bought a further out of the money call at 280. I decided the short leg looking at the resistance level. Because the stock was fundamentally very strong, I avoided shorting it with stocks. The stock was not giving any valid short trade setup at that time, not any of the Q trade setup, so I was not sure how long it will take for it to pull back remember i didn't try a put option because that would mean every day going by would lose value of the option i chose short call vertical so even if it took a while wandered around and then fell back or at least stayed at the same level i would benefit from time decay and if the stock fell down i would benefit from the delta move as well. That's why I chose short call vertical but not put option. If I was having a valid Q short trade setup then I would probably go for put option not for short call vertical. But this was not the case and also I bought the call vertical with enough time to expire. So let it have some time to go up wander around and then fall back. because i had shorted a strike that was already out of the money 
and then bought a strike further out of the money. For such a vertical, we don't expect 1 is to 1 reward risk ratio. In this case, max potential profit was 790, max potential loss was 1290, reward risk ratio about 0 0.6. That is common. If I used other strikes, it was possible to have a 1 is to 1 reward risk ratio in a call vertical. However, I wanted to have the short strike out of the money at the resistance level. So I was okay with reduced reward risk ratio of 0.6. In one week, it was initiated on 11th May. In one week, as of 18th May, 10.20 AM EST, Eastern Standard Time, open profit was $317, which was 40% of the max potential profit with 28 more days to go. It was $317 profit. And I think afterwards, the profit increased. Let's look at the Baidu charts. This was the Baidu daily chart when I took the PNL snapshot. The short call vertical was initiated on this day. I did that trade looking at the intraday chart. At that time, when I took the trade, price was below this memory resistance line and the candle shape was bearish, if I remember correctly, the color was also not green. However, as you can see, at the end of the day, price went up. It was a good decision not to try to short using puts. It was a very good decision to use short call particles. Afterwards, it tried to go up. So I had some loss, but I didn't have to put any stop order because it was a short call vertical. My maximum loss was predefined and time decay was in my favor. So I was not in a hurry to exit. If I am using short call vertical or short put vertical for a trade, I don't think about putting a stop loss on that trade. As of 18th May, this was how buy to look like. It came back below the memory resistance level. In fact, it fell very sharply and with extreme high activity on this day. Completed a false upside breakout. This is what happens to traders who try to buy stocks at the very top. Trying to buy it as a breakout trade at the very top when it was breaking out of memory resistance as well as watermark resistance didn't do well for them if somebody took a long trade at this point the stop loss would be very far that is not Q trading way we try to always take trades with narrow stop loss structuring this trade as a short call vertical ensured that it was a narrow stop loss order in effect now what to do with this trade it has many days to go. Every day that passes by, if the stock stays at same level, goes down or even goes up little bit. My short strike is at 270. Unless price closes above that, my profit will increase as every day passes by. Therefore, I decided not to book any profit. Instead, I put a stop order now saying that if stock price is going, somewhere above this level exit my position that is ensuring that i have no loss in this trade if stock comes to this price level i will not have any loss in my short call verticals because i would have benefited already with some time decay and if the stock continues to go down or stays at the same level my profit will keep on increasing in the last session, after the regular market roundup, we had an extended session. I explained that options trading is usually not effective, whatever people say. If we think about the risk related to the reward, options trading doesn't make sense. And I mentioned there are only few situations when it may make sense. And Baidu was one such case. In such case of 
why do you would not like to use stocks short call verticals might be appropriate and it turned out to do very well how is why do now as of this snapshot it was at 257.9 let's see how it closed on friday friday's close was at 253 and after market we can see the last price is even lower so since i took the snapshot from 257 it fell further again the decision not to book profit but instead put a stop order so that i have a no loss trade was the right decision let's look at one more post from the community recently one trader mentioned that he was buying gopro well known stock but not fundamentally strong when i saw somebody mentioning gopro i wanted to carry out a peer analysis and we can do that using q vital in real time or we can do that using q scorecard let's use q scorecard to save time first i have to identify the industry if i remember it was in consumer electronics these are the stocks in consumer electronics industry gopro is one of them let's sort them by valuation by easy clicking easy double clicking on the valuation primary column instantly we see that gopro is not optimally valued far from that it in fact has the worst score among the peers poor score and deep magenta color on the other hand zzz zag has the best score among the peers and is optimally valued what about growth gopro if we look at the yearly eps growth is negative this year minus 52 percent this year over three years minus 180 percent whereas for zzz generally the growth is better we can see more green colors and some even bright green colors in the recent videos even in terms of revenue growth it is better than gopro zag has robust earnings quality potential short squeeze gopro doesn't have good earnings quality as well has a short squeeze potential but less than zag in terms of fundamentals across all dimensions zag was stronger therefore we would not like to buy gopro if we consider its fundamentals what about technicals i did the analysis already so let me look at the post from the forum this is how the daily charts looked at that time on the left hand side is zzz and on the right hand side is gopro we can see that zag had broken above white and yellow direction lines at the earnings and holding the price gain it is out of the watermark resistance or the narrow range move at the bottom it had displayed a bullish schedule long time ago that nicely caught the bottom price practically didn't close below that below the low of the bullish schedule signal it is having very bullish move in the daily chart in gopro we had a bullish headwind signal as well so far it is catching the very low however it is still inside the watermark resistance levels and below the white direction line as of this post it had a bearish headwind signal not the time we would like to take a long trip in terms of daily charts technically zag was stronger what about weekly charts again in weekly charts zag is stronger we have more bullish shape candles on the right hand side gopro is starting to turn bullish but this weekly candle at the right edge is indecisive in shape and we just saw daily display the bearish signal 
overall combining weekly and daily zag is stronger in terms of technicals it was clearly stronger in terms of fundamentals therefore if we had to take a trade in this industry zag would clearly be a better choice isn't it there are many other useful thoughts that i shared in the social network pages be it facebook twitter google plus pages or even my personal linkedin page or the community forum traders forum you may keep an eye on them it helps us to be disciplined follow a systematic way of investing combining as many edges as we can in favor of our trades let me summarize from the market breadth and the market etf study we see the market is indecisive iwm is the only etf that is strongly bullish however on friday that also displayed a bearish headwind signal all the other etfs are neutral and the market internals are also neutral this is a time to either stay away from the market or balance the long positions with short positions in terms of sector level we saw market is slightly more bearish than bullish more sectors went down and they went down by bigger percentages however sector and market levels are too broad and that we saw clearly when we studied consumer discretionary at sector level it didn't move much however when we drill down we see many of the consumer discretionary industries are among the best performers and among the most accelerating industries several of those industries were weak for long time this may be the time to look for long term as well as swing long opportunities in them on the other hand sectors that were strong earlier technology and financials they showed deceleration it is probably not a time to start taking new long positions in them if we have profitable long positions we don't have to exit them we may hold them using trailing stop that was all that i plan to share in today's session thanks to all of you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably